Hey everybody, Jason here again with GDT Basics and the video question line. Today's topic is true position for multiple features. And the question submitted is, I know that it's an acceptable practice to have multiple features stacked onto the same feature control frame. For example, a through hole on the same axis as multiple critical quantum board diameters may all be controlled when directly above a single positional feature control frame. Is there a section in the ASME Y14.5 that specifically states that this is okay? The short answer is yes, there is a section, and I'll get to that in a moment. But I want to talk about this unique design scenario that not a lot of people know about. So in order to talk about this, I want to pull up this example drawing here. Now, this might not be a complete drawing example. We're missing title block and whatnot. But let's take a look at this pattern of seven features right here. We see this feature control frame is attached to a couple size dimensions. That is seven times the 0.397 through hole diameter, as well as seven times the counterboard diameter of 0.625 and seven times the depth of 0.375 on all of those counterboard diameter depths, which means we have seven line items to assess the through hole diameter, seven line items to assess the counterboard diameter, seven line items to assess the depth of 0.375 and at least seven line items for position. And I say at least because if we take a look at this feature right here, one of these seven instances, the counterbore actually has two coaxial features and the position is applied to each one of these axes. And so we can see we can have an axis that represents the counterbore diameter and an axis that represents the through hole diameter. The position control will establish a tolerance zone that each of these axes must lie within. So this position control, as you see here, will allow the location and orientation of the counterbore as well as the through hole to deviate separately. In fact, they will. In the real world, there's no way both of these features will line up perfectly. More often than not, we're drilling the through hole in one operation, swapping out a tool and coming back and drilling out the counterbore diameter or milling out the counterbore diameter. However you achieve this feature is going to require that these axes be manufactured in separate operations. Although your machine may be very, very, very accurate, they will not be perfectly coaxial. Which means we should also inspect and make sure how not coaxial they are. And that's exactly what this feature control frame is supporting. Each one of those axes has its own position error. So the position feature control frame here would actually be 14 line items on an inspection port, seven locations for the through hole and seven locations for the counterboard diameter. And this is fully supported by the ASME Y14.5 standard. Now, if you don't want to control them to the same amount of position tolerance, in other words, maybe you want to give a little bit more freedom to the counterbore diameter since it's not as critical as the through hole diameter, you could easily come in here and say seven times diameter of 0.397 for our through hole and apply a position tolerance to the through hole diametrically of maybe 0.001 with respect to A, B, and C. And now you can see you can get rid of the tolerance here. So we'd have a separate feature control frame for the through holes and a separate feature control frame for the counterboard diameters and their depth. And so we can control them differently if that's what we require as a designer. But more often than not, the scenario that you see right here is more than enough for most designs. However, if you want to control other diameters that happen to be nominally coaxial to other features, you would use different feature control frames to control their position tighter or looser. So we can see the axis of our counterbore diameter and the axis of our through hole diameter can deviate separately. But with this scenario here, we're guaranteeing at most they will always be within five thousandths of each other diametrically. Now, as far as the standard that supports this, go to ASME Y14.5-2009. It's also in the 2018 and previous standards. But section 7.4.2 in the 2009 standard outlines this theory that where positional tolerances are used to locate coaxial features such as counterboard holes, the following practice applies. Where the same positional tolerance is used to locate both holes and counterboards, a single feature control frame is placed under the notes specifying the hole and counterbore requirements, just like we saw in our example. Now, identical diameter tolerance zones for the hole and counterbore are coaxially located or constrained in translation and rotation at true position relative to the specified datums. That's why we can see here that this tolerance zone is a singular tolerance zone. If you'd rather picture it as two tolerance zones that are the same size and coaxial, you're more than welcome to. But we also see the other scenarios in B and C where you can change up the design intent by allowing more position for the feature that you want to have more position tolerance. 
So hopefully that helps out, and uh, thanks for tuning in. Our goal is to be your best source for gd and information online. It's important to us that everyone involved in engineering and manufacturing have the chance to learn and better understand gd and on your prints. We have many free resources to help you get started on your learning journey. Subscribe to our gd and community using the link in the description below or visit our website. Test your knowledge with our gd and and print reading quizzes. Download helpful charts and access articles written by training experts.